This is Chris Whalen, CPA, and welcome to the Street Level Business Podcast. This is one of a series of interviews that I'm calling Coronavirus Lockdown Business Stories, where I interview other business owners about their experience with the lockdown. We have a great guest today, a good friend of mine, Vincent Gentile, and um, he knows everything about web design and web mastering. And I'm going to let him introduce himself and give him give some information about his firm. Um, and then we're going to get started with my questions. Good after- Vincent, good afternoon. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Good. So, well, my name is Vincent Gentile. My company is AVM Internet Solutions. We specialize in web design and SEO or search engine optimization. And we overlap into lots of other online marketing options. So depending on the client. Uh, been in business 12 years, located here in central New Jersey. Um, Most of my clients, I would say, are right here in central New Jersey, but I do have a, a few niche, mar- niche markets where we market to pool and spa retailers. So those clients are in different parts of the country, all throughout New England, Florida, and um, California. All right, everyone, everyone should remember that Vincent can, can handle any clients in the, you know, the continental United States, or I'm sure Alaska and Hawaii. Um, and again, this, this series of interviews has to do with the lockdown and, you know, a, a bunch of different impacts in different areas of your business and as an entrepreneur. So, and so you really don't have or need a brick and mortar business because, you know, you're virtual anyway. You could do your job from basically anywhere. Like I, I know this morning you're on the beach in Key West working with your notebook computer. So, so do you have any, any initial lockdown comments? Like, did you, did you have any inquiries from clients related to the lockdown for any reason that came about that were that surprised you was there any nervous calls or you know just give me some insight on that or, or has it been status quo so well, initially far? initially there was a lot a lot of changes because everyone wanted a COVID-19 statement on their site ah. so we did a lot of that right up front and those all changed depending on the client depending on the what they wanted to say some were a little more elaborate than others. Now, what happened in, um, since it's, um, you know, we can't be out and about, some businesses were closed, but they wanted curbside delivery or pickup options. So we did create lots of scheduling um, opportunities for clients where a user could visit the website, schedule a time, they're gonna come to the store to pick up a product. And then that would automatically get emailed to the folks in the store. They have the products ready. And then we built a lot of online payment forms. So clients that didn't have a way to pay online, that happened. So, but most of that's all been in place. Now, I guess when this comes stops, we'll have to go down and- Okay, so an interesting, an interesting question. So the people that wanted to have a COVID, you know, a banner or whatever it might be, did you find that a lot of them really wanted them for practical purposes or did some of them want to follow the trend and make sure they said something about COVID or were most just practical business owners that wanted to say something practical about, about their business processing changing? Well, I think it was a little of both, but I think in many cases they were worried that uh, customers would not know that they're open. So Got they it. put the statement out and they made it very clear that we're here, we're doing business this way, and we're going to be safe and so forth. Well, interesting. So, mm-hmm. um, again, all of your staff can, can work, uh, work uh, from home anyway, even if you had a brick and mortar location. So that doesn't really apply to you. You're, I guess you're, 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 you're COVID free almost, you know, you're not as impacted as other people brick and mortar were, right? So did you find that of course, video conferencing is up. So I know you like to go and meet your clients, you know, just especially initially. So did you just find that were your video conferencing type of initial client meetings as effective as being in person? How did you find that, that change you happening? Know, it's interesting. Um, we've always done some video conferencing for clients outside of the area. Locally here in central New Jersey, I like to meet with my clients and we meet at their office or... Um, restaurant or something like that but now with um you know zoom has gotten is great because uh, we can really have a a great meeting 
because I can show the client, they can share my screen and I can show them all the reports. I can show them screenshots. I have a large uh, arrow on the mouse where I can scroll around and highlight different things. And uh, so it's got the online meetings that are almost more effective sometimes. Right, I agree with them. Um, I mean, I've done, of course, a lot of video conferencing over the years, but especially now, like screen sharing, we're talking about. So I'm going over financials or tax returns. Let's say mm -hmm. a couple's in front of me usually, and I'm, I have my big screen in my office, which I can pull out. So uh, that, that's pretty effective, and I use it. But, but now, it, right, it really helps me. I can pull up a certain page of the tax return. Everyone can see it on my screen. I can highlight certain lines. So mm -hmm. you make sure they're really focusing on it. So um, it definitely, I almost, you know, I can see there's almost going to be times where I want people to have notebooks in front of them when I am sitting with them physically. Right. So I can just use, I can just pull up what I'm, you know, so have a Zoom meeting when I'm physically with someone to use though, you know, so that, that, that's something. I do have a question here to talk about, um, you know, your, your processes um, during, you know, has a lockdown exposed any weaknesses in your business processes at all? Or is there anything now that we've, we've, that we've used during this lockdown to cope, uh, to adjust that you're going to use going forward. Like I just mentioned, I would use zoom sitting with people. I, I'm sure I'm going to use it so mm -hmm. I can have everyone focus right in front of me right. on the screen instead of having, I do have a big screen in my office, a big, you know, to display, right? Well, I'm certainly going to use a zoom more, um, because you can have a very quick meeting and an effective meeting. You know, there's some great tools for highlighting things on the screen, circling them um, really, uh, so it, you can really zero in. So we'll continue to do that. I don't know if there was any weaknesses um, because the way uh, my revenue stream, I have several revenue streams. So when one falls off, hopefully the other one increases. Nobody expected this to happen. But uh, so I don't know if there was a way to prepare for that. But uh, that's always been my model is to have several revenue streams. So you have consistent revenue coming right. in across the board. And, and so you're, you're always a big stat, stat guy, you know, web traffic and things like that. So just for, give an overall picture that, you know, since the lockdown happened, you know, have, um, you know, I'm sure that the traffic during the day is increased. So can you just if you have any information on that? Can you give, give everyone an idea of, of, of the differences in web traffic or, or volume of data moving at different times of the day? And was there really a significant change? And you know, so can you, if you have any information on that, it might be interesting for people. Yeah, well, it, it is interesting because search has changed a lot in the last 30 to 40 days because of COVID. And Google has not known how to handle that. Now, on top of that, there was other things that Google rolled out. Now, May 4th, they rolled out a core update. Now, why they did this in the middle of a world pandemic, I don't know. Mm. But whenever they do an update, whether in, in the past five, seven years, you had Panda and Penguin and all these other updates, some businesses always get buried or they lose a lot of traffic. Luckily for me, my clients did not lose any ranking. But I go into forums every day and there's people around the world screaming because they spent 10 years building a website and ranking it, and now they're, they have half the traffic. So that's one big thing. Another big thing is in the middle of April, Google, there was a problem with Google indexing new content. So this affected us because clients that we're doing SEO for that were putting out new content, blogs and all kinds of ranking pages, Google has not indexed those, which means they're not coming up in the search. So uh. we can't show clients results, which is a problem because my clients like to see the results before they pay me. So now I was just on another um, forum today and they were aware of the problem. They're going to work on fixing it. But it's a little sketchy that Google would even do this whole core update right in the middle of a world pandemic. So. There's been In, lots of changes. Interesting. It's above my pay grade. It's little gray men conversation. <laughs> so, um, so, so let, let's just talk about a, I want to talk about you as a web designer, developer, SEO specialist, but then also as an entrepreneur, right? So that's why you're on here. Everyone I'm interviewing, of course, are experts in their field, but I, 
I've chosen you to do this because at the heart of what you do, you're an entrepreneur. I try to tell everyone, just because you're a business owner does not mean you're an entrepreneur and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Just because you have a KFC franchise does not mean you're an entrepreneur. So, so, so if you so can true. give, just, just give some insight into, you know, what people should be expecting or should have expected from their web developer, SEO person during this time, you know, and going forward, you know, what should, what should they be expecting, if anything different, you know, should, is there any difference in skill set that should be looked for in a web designer, like going through this lockdown, which is going to be probably substantial, whether it be skill set for the business owner or even a, a skill set for the public or other, um, like I said, as an entrepreneur. So give me, give me some thoughts on that, if you could. I don't know if it's going to change the web design as a skill set, but I think it's going to change search to a point and some of the things that have gone on because I'm not sure how this is going to flush out with coming out of their core update and coming through their changes as far as search. So that, that concerns me. Um, I think going forward, there's going to be different opportunities. There's going to be businesses going out of business which is gonna make opportunities for other companies to go in and create new businesses. Right. So we're gonna come into play in helping in all those different ways. And it won't be initially, it'll be several months out down the road. Right. Because my experience with small business folks is when they're nervous and when cash is tight, they're not marketing. And we should always be marketing. Right, but, agreed. And I, I think, a big lesson from all of this is, um, you know, people, no matter what size company, people want a physical person they can talk to. So right. you're going to see a lot of the banks, some in New York, especially that don't have branches that are all automated. Um, they, they're getting a lot of bad scores out there because people need to talk to somebody. So, you know, I'm very focused on client communication, do most of it myself with my clients. Um, and I'm seeing that, so that's good advice here for the entrepreneur, is that um, you, you definitely need to personally engage with people, especially when they are worried. Um, and that's the best way to lose business is not, not returning a call fast enough um, and trying to push people into automated systems. Mm -hmm. are, 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 believe me, it's, it's terrible marketing for you. Like I always say, the worst marketing I've ever heard was uh, wait times are, are longer due to higher call volume <laughs> so that is the worst so that's what you want to avoid so people haven't gotten back to people in three weeks so i always yeah. say if your call volume is too high that means that your product is terrible and if you're making people wait that means you're too cheap to want to help them fix the problems you created <laughs> so never say call volume so uh people should step up their personal concern People should be talking to clients more. You'll agree, as I do, which of course was Vincent's advice for me years ago. Um, of course, we need to be blogging more. We need to mm -hmm. be showing people more than ever. You can't just give people a menu of what you do. All right, so I'm an insurance guy. I'm a CPA. I'm a web designer. I don't, I don't want to see a laundry list of every tax return Chris Whalen does. I need to know what you're doing on the street right now, how you're being effective. Um, so... You want to start to effectively blog what you do. Like, for example, I don't need to know. I always tell people if I meet a brain surgeon and they, they specialize in frontal lobe surgery, when I get a blog post from that, that, imagine I got a blog post from that brain surgeon that talked about the scalpel he uses and the gurney he uses and the, and the, the blue booties he's wearing. Right. You know, so I want to know, oh, someone presented with a, a 2789 cancer in the frontal lobe, and I fixed it. Perfect. <laughs> Big, so like my blog, it's so, so that's just good advice here. And Vincent is someone, someone like Vincent, if you don't have someone like Vincent, and there's only one of him, we know, um, yeah. that you, you need to engage him. If you're not sure if your web design and web work is, is, is doing the job, if it's efficient enough, you know, what are your goals? I talk to people, everyone I'm interviewing here, I want to know, a client that has web design need, you know, are you presented with goals and, and uh, are you talking to someone like me when it comes to taxes? I should also help you develop your goals. 
right? I often see that professionals say, oh, what's your goal for this? I'm supposed to tell you in a way what your goal is after interviewing you and what, <laughs> what, are you, what, what to be expected. So um, I, I can't tell you enough, Vincent, how much I appreciate you coming on and sharing you know, your entrepreneurial and specific web design information. Um, why don't you also tell everyone exactly how to reach you again before we sign off? So you can visit me at avminternetsolutions.com is the main website. Uh, I do have a niche market, which is uh, swimming pool retailers. And that website is poolstoremarketing.com. And that ranks nationally. Uh, my email is vincent at avminternetsolutions.com. Or you can call me 732-526-7590. And I'm going to be putting his information, you know, in the, in the video description box and also right in the body of my blog page where most of you will be seeing this. So thank you very much, Vincent. Again, this is Chris Whalen, CPA. This has been the Street Level Business Podcast, our special interview series. Again, if you need to reach out to me, it's always chriswhalencpa.com. Plenty of ways to reach me there. Contact me, write to me, call me anytime or email me. Vincent, thank you very much. And hopefully Thanks, we're going to follow up, with, follow up with you maybe towards the end of the year as this plays okay. out to get a little more insight, a little post-mortem on what's gone on. Very good. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Okay. You too. Take care.